Ayan. Welcome, young and old, gay and straight, married, single, bisexual, transgender, welcome. People of all colors, cultures, and abilities, welcome. Noisy, wiggly babies and children of all ages, welcome. Rich and poor, powerful and weak, believers and questioners and questioning believers, welcome. Welcome all you who seek God's graceful, open-hearted love and the beautiful new world that love makes possible. Welcome to St. Stephen United Methodist Church. Well, good morning, St. Stephen Community, Facebook Live and beyond. We are so glad that you joined us this morning for Easter worship. We stand now before the entrance to the church. Many people have referred to our architectural jewel as uh, looking tomb-like, and perhaps this morning that's an appropriate moniker, because this morning we stand before the empty tomb of Christ the stone has been rolled away and we wait to look in and see what has happened. I'm excited to walk inside with you and see what's happened in just a minute. Before we do that, I wanna let you know about two events happening this week. The first is a virtual fellowship on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We'll be gathering on Zoom to have fellowship together. And then Thursday at 8 p.m., We'll be gathering again on Zoom for Theology on Tap. Uh, the subject this week will be death. We thought that was an appropriate topic for the week of Easter. Um, so if you'd like to get, uh, join us for a theological discussion around death, um, the tap will have to be the one in your own home. So whatever drink you want, you'll have to provide yourself. Uh, but we invite you to join us for those two events. You can find uh, links to those events, the Zoom links on our Facebook page uh, for virtual fellowship on Wednesday and Theology on Tap on Thursday. And as always, throughout the week, we host morning prayer at 9 a.m. and Compline at 9 p.m. every day on our uh, Facebook page, Facebook Live, 9 a.m. morning prayer, 9 p.m. Zoom, uh, 9 p.m. Compline on Facebook Live on this channel. We hope that you'll take a moment in the comments to check in with us. Let us know that you're watching. Um, share the broadcast, host a watch party. Let people know that this is a place, this is a community that you belong to, that you care about, and that you want to invite others into. As you've just heard, uh, St. Stephen is a community where all are welcome to gather in God's house. And when we say all, we mean all. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, where you're going where you are today. You can wear a hoodie, you can wear dungarees. It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is, your sexual identity. This is a place where you are welcome because we believe that every person, hoodie, dungarees, or otherwise, are created in the image of God, loved by God, and claimed by God as a child of God. And we want to celebrate that here and affirm that. As we prepare for our time together in worship, as we prepare to greet the risen Christ. I invite you to take the time during the prelude to center yourself and to cross over the threshold from regular time to holy time, from regular space to sacred space with your heart, with your mind, with your soul, with your very being, to put all the distractions behind and as much as you can to be present with us here. In such an attitude, let us prepare ourselves for worship as we receive this morning's prayer.
join with me in our call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Oh, I was muted apparently. So sorry. Well, what I was saying was that I, Happy Easter, and I'm here and you're there. 
And one of the things that I was telling Jeffrey and Ryan and Mr. Michael and Heather and anybody who would listen to me, that one of the things that I really, really missed about Easter is that cross, that wooden cross, you know, that we have out in front. And everybody comes and puts beautiful flowers on it, and I just, I just love it. Well, we don't have it, because that would mean everybody would have to get out and be around each other. So I did, because I was missing those flowers, I did bring some flowers from my backyard. I don't have very many. They're kind of pitiful, but there they are. But then I walked in and saw the lilies, which I always love to see on Easter morning. And I don't know, can I tell them what I noticed about those lilies? I don't know if you noticed it on the video, but the lilies in the middle are in the shape of a heart. And I just, I don't know if that was on purpose. I guess I'm gonna have to listen to the sermon. But I was really, I just, that just, just kind of warmed my heart to see those lilies in the shape of a heart. And so since we're not together this Easter, I was really kind of struggling with what I wanted the lesson to be. And I thought, you know, every Sunday after church, I go back and watch the live stream. And I'm noticing that there are people watching the live stream that I don't know. Have you noticed that? There, there are a lot of people watching that I'm like, well, who is that? Well, who is that person? Who is that person? And so I thought that it would really, really be cool if you guys shared what you love about our church. For all those people out there watching that, that really don't know a lot about our church. And if we were here live, you guys would be sharing that with me up here in front. And so first, thank you to all your parents who sent those videos to me. And so those of you watching this morning, oh gracious, this is what our children love about St. Stephen. I love the coloring central. Two reasons I love St. Stephen are, one, because it allows anyone who wants to come to our church come. And two, because I love getting to see my church family and getting to spend time with them. And I love all the fun lessons we do in Miss Teddy's class. I like church because I get to see my friends and my G and I get to say hi to Mr. Michael and I learn about God. What I really like about St. Stephen's is the music and the Bibles and the summer camps and Miss Teddy's Sunday school group and I basically like everything about it. St. Stephen is that they have Sunday school for children and it's very fun and you get to have a fun lesson. And I also like that after the opening hymn you get children's time and they teach you, it teaches you a very good lesson about God and or Jesus. And I also like that they can do feasts and they do an Easter egg hunt and I like the chili cook-off. I like a lot of the fun parties they have too. I like to go outside at the church and play in the courtyard and then yeah, I like St. Stephen because the people there are so nice and I can make lots of friends. I love St. Stephen because I have so many friends there. That's one reason. Well, there's Bishop, Patrick, Michael, Zephyr, Mason, and then there's even Kara and Robin. I have a lot of friends. The second reason is I love the summer camp there. I love being be doing that musical. I loved doing the family movie night at church. Hi, this is Michael. Um, what I like about our church is love. And all of us love each other. So, and that will never hold us against each other. So we always care for each other when they are hurt or sad or mad. So help them if they're sad, mad, or, or worried. 
them and then say, no, that's not, that's not, that's not nice. So, that's why we talk about love.
Thank you, friends. That was fun making music with my friends. Our scripture this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 6. Jeremiah, in this passage, proclaims the future hope of Israel. An, to an Israel that stands in the midst of devastation, Jerusalem destroyed, the king humiliated, and the leadership being marched to exile in Babylon. In the midst of these circumstances, hear what Jeremiah has to say. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you up, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come! Let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. So, we've been talking a lot this Lenten season about waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting. Friday night we sang, wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, watch and pray. Just a few weeks ago, we talked about waiting upon the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. This seemed like an appropriate theme for Scripture to bring to us this Lenten season because we are waiting, are we not? We are waiting for restrictions to be lifted. Some of us are waiting for stimulus checks. Others of us are waiting for food. Maybe you're waiting for a paycheck. Maybe you're waiting for unemployment. Maybe you're just waiting for the unemployment office to respond. All of us, I think, are waiting for this new normal to no longer be normal. Amen? Amen? Since Friday, we've been waiting for, well, today, for Easter. Since Friday, we've sat and kept vigil. Some of us have entered the great silence between that hour on Friday 
and that hour this morning. I want to suggest to you that this was not like the first Easter for the first disciples, though. The great silence that they experienced was quite different. They didn't know what was happening. Everything they knew, their entire way of life had been taken away from them in a matter of moments. They were discouraged. They were devastated. They were afraid of what the future might hold. They, too, were waiting for some seemingly new normal not to be normal. They, too, were waiting anxiously about an unknown future. We know that Christ rose on the third day. The great silence and waiting into which we enter doesn't demand very much of us, does it? Because we know Sunday's coming. It may be Friday, but Sunday's coming. I think that's what makes this time in our society so unnerving. Because we don't know when Sunday is coming. We might learn something from those disciples. You know, I think of another time of anxious waiting in my life was waiting for the arrival of my child. Now, I've never been pregnant, obviously. Uh, but I've walked alongside a pregnancy. And I know what it's like to wait anxiously, especially if you're late and that Sunday that you were promised has come and gone, and especially if it's 110 degrees outside in the summer and the humidity is 212%, the anxiety starts to rise up. You are waiting for the new normal to no longer be normal. And the problem is that the change isn't up to mom. It's up to the baby. We're waiting for that baby to release hormones and say, I'm ready to get out of here. And so we wait expectantly. Sometimes we wait anxiously during pregnancy because our pregnancy is high risk. Because every day of waiting introduces a new chance, a new risk, a new day that things could go south. This was my waiting with my child's mother. For some people, the image of pregnancy is painful because we have a large, silent population experiencing infertility. I want you to know that I hear you because this was my experience. I want you to know that I feel your pain. And I want you to know that I'm here to sit with you in that pain. But I also want you to hear this. Sometimes, sometimes resurrection, <clears throat> new life, doesn't look like what we expected it to. It doesn't come in the form that we expected it to come in. It doesn't come from where we expected it to come. 
This, I think, is Jeremiah's message to Israel and to us this morning. Israel was devastated. They saw no hope. Everything that they had been promised in the covenant had been taken away from them. And yet here Jeremiah proclaims at that time, I will raise you up. You shall plant vineyards again and build buildings again. The temple shall be restored. You shall worship God in the temple in Jerusalem. You shall be my people and I will be your God. I have to imagine they were looking around going, what? I can't even hear those words right now. When the women went to the tomb that first Easter morning, they were looking for the past. They were looking for what they knew. They were looking for a dead body in a tomb. What they were confronted with was an empty tomb. And they didn't know what to do with it. They had to have stepped back and said, what? Even Mary, when confronted with Jesus right in front of her, doesn't recognize him. Because she's looking for the past. She's looking for what she knew. She's looking for what she expected. It doesn't matter that the disciples had been told over and over and over again. There is no death that is so dead that God can't find life in it. Over and over Jesus told them this. And yet when confronted with death, they decided that was the end. They couldn't believe, they couldn't understand, they couldn't comprehend. Because they didn't understand that a steadfast love so deep, so broad, so high, so low that it goes before and after and above and beyond and below had turned an empty tomb into a womb that gave forth new life, that brought forth new possibilities, that proclaimed once again and forevermore there is no death so dead that God cannot find life in it. I want to suggest to you this Easter Sunday, when we cannot be together, when we cannot gather as God's people in God's house, and share the love of God together, I want to suggest to you that maybe the tomb that we feel like we're trapped in right now could be a womb for the church. The church is not dead. The church is not closed. Easter hasn't been called off. God is alive, and the work of the kingdom goes on. We are here. And we will continue to proclaim the good news of Christ that love and life has won over death. And we will once again come to the tomb and experience new life together once more. Amen.
our series this Easter season will be entitled The Heart of the Matter. Thus, the heart uh, up front in the form of the lilies. We'll be focusing on what the heart of discipleship is and what the heart of the Christian gospel is. And at that heart lies God's steadfast, unfailing love for all people, for all children, for all created in the image of God. The Gospels remind us that one of the things that allowed the tomb to become a womb was the rolling away of the stone. For it was the stone placed in front of the mouth that caused it to be a tomb. So throughout this series, we will be using what we call worry stones. I invite you to, uh, this week at home, find a stone that's, you know, comfortable to hold in your hand. You might want to take some markers or paint and put a heart on it, or pay, maybe a favorite scripture reference that helps you uh, center yourself. These worry stones are a way to concentrate our attention, to place our worries in the palm of our hands, and then most importantly, to let them go, and to place them in God's care to place them in the light of Christ. Knowing that we don't have to carry our worries. The stones that stood in our way have been rolled away. That God stands ready to move those stones so that we might have life. As we prepare to bring the worries and concerns of the world to God in prayer, I invite you to um, put your comments in Facebook so that we can lift up the prayers for those who are carrying stones that need to be rolled away, for those who are carrying burdens that need to be lifted and given to Christ so that they might know the deep peace of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. May we know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer pain and ill health with their families, friends, and those who care for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence the suffering people of the world and the places where people experience division, injustice, and violence. May they know the deep peace of Christ. 
Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence wounded creation, polluted air and soiled ocean depths, endangered species and ravaged forests, and all things groaning for redemption. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those struggling to overcome injustice or abuse, those supporting and working with them, and all whose suffering has distanced them from those who love them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those facing bereavement. We also pray for those who have died. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those whose needs are not known to us and those who are close to us, those whose names we do not know but who are known to you and for whom we have been asked to pray. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, we give you thanks for health restored and prayers answered. May your wisdom, living God, guide nurses, doctors, public health officials, elected leaders, and all those who work to promote healing throughout the world. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Through the heart of Christ, come near to us in reconciling love. By the power of your Spirit, bless our living with hope and feed us in joy. In the unity of your Spirit, draw us together as your own dear renewed children. Refresh us now as we open who we are to who we may yet become. These prayers we offer you, everlasting God, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the strength of your Holy Spirit, who live and reign with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear this good news. Even while we wandered estranged from God and one another, God reconciled us through Jesus Christ and gave us a ministry of reconciliation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have been reconciled. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have been reconciled. Amen. 
I invite you now to rise in body and in spirit and to share the unsurpassing peace of Christ with one another. As a reminder, we're using the ASL sign for peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you and also with you and also with you. I pray peace indeed be with you these days. I pray that you shelter not only in place, but indeed in peace. As we prepare ourselves this morning to receive our offering, I would remind you that the church is open. We continue in ministry. In fact, this week, we will be feeding over 70 people through our food distribution ministry right here from this sanctuary. We continue to feed the hungry. We continue to call on those who need care. We continue to gather as we can virtually to work in discipleship and love for the reconciliation of all persons. And so I invite you, as you are able during this time, to give and to give generously. I encourage you to give online. You may do so by using the URL at the bottom of your screen, which will take you to our giving portal where you may set up your uh, account and uh, specify your gift. Or if you already have online giving set up with us, you may text your gift to 84321. That's any amount to 84321. Thank you for your generosity. Let us prepare ourselves for this morning's offertory. Join with me in this, our offering prayer. Gracious God, for the resurrected Christ, we give you thanks. We ask that these tithes and gifts be used for your glory and that we may be enabled to bring the light and love of the resurrected Christ to the dark corners of the world. In the name of Christ, our Savior, amen.
Join me now in our prayer of thanksgiving. All things come from you, O oh God. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so, in gratitude for all your gifts, we offer you ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one ministry to all the world that we may walk in love all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It feels good to sing Alleluia again, doesn't it? After six weeks of not singing Alleluia, it feels good to open the windows, to roll back the stone, and to let out the sound. We come now to the time in our service which is normally titled the Hymn of Invitation. This is a time when I would invite those who are present who might wish to claim St. Stephen United Methodist Church as their home community to come forward during the closing hymn. I considered this week retitling it Closing Hymn because, of course, there's no one here to invite forward. And then this week, I had a very interesting conversation. Because someone who had met us through Facebook reached out to me and said, I'd like to have a conversation with you about joining St. Stephen United Methodist Church. And so we had a conversation via Zoom and started a dialogue about what kind of community St. Stephen is and what it would be like to be part of that community. So I decided to leave it the hymn of invitation. If you've connected with us on Facebook and you would like to call St. Stephen Community your home, then message us please on our Facebook page. Let us know and I will get in touch with you via Facebook Messenger so that we can talk. In the meantime, we have the unique opportunity to lift our voices in song for a text which was composed specifically for today, specifically for Easter 2020 in mind. It's a text from Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, who has a gift for writing timely contemporaneous texts. This is sung to the tune of Aurelia, which you will recognize as the church's one foundation. Let us raise our voices in song as we sing this Easter celebration.
Indeed, we live the Easter message by gladly serving Christ. I want to suggest this to you as we go from this place, as we disperse, as it were. This may be an opportunity unlike any other to be the church. Do you know that right now it is so easy to invite your friends to church? All you need to do is click share. All you need to do is click a button. You don't have to have a conversation with them. You don't have to look them in the eye. Just share what's already there, what they already have access to. Invite them to come join us as a community online. That's my challenge to you this week. Live the Easter message by proclaiming the love of God by inviting people to come to St. Stephen United Methodist Church as we explore over the next few weeks what the heart of the matter really is. And now, as we finish our time in worship together and we go our separate ways, we bless ourselves with the words we use every week. Now, may the peace of God go with us. May the power of God sustain us. But most of all, may the love of God keep us together forever.